Just repeat everything you said in a simple 10-second <laughs> sound bite for each topic, please. Um, so let's start with Utah, the scheduling. Obviously, nothing is set past this year. What's the future? I think that we're working with uh, University of Utah. Chris Hill and I have talks that have been ongoing. We have a good relationship. We're good friends, and, and Utah's trying hard under the uh, conditions that they have with the Pac-12 Pac and, and us as an independent. So as long as the talks are going, I feel positive about it. How confident are you about a game in 2013? Um, I'm confident. I, I don't, we don't have any deals. There's no contracts. But I think as long as the talks are going, that will work something out. And just to the fans' perspective out there, it's, it's more that the times are changing, not that the rivalry has is, is died off and lost its luster. <laughs> I don't think the rivalry has died yeah. off or will it. Uh, it's different for sure, but I think that it's not a matter of uh, everybody just walking in a different direction now, but there are some logistics having to do with uh, scheduling that make it tougher than it used to be. We never had to schedule a game. We never had a contract because we were always in the same conference. So it's just tougher with the atmosphere in college athletics these days. And if it does happen, do you foresee it being an early fall game, or is the potential that it could slide into a late November sport? Well, it, it looks like it would probably be early because of the Pac-12 uh, restrictions on scheduling, and, and that's how it is with all Pac-12. That's not just Utah. But if there were a caveat where you could get a – a late game and we could play the last game of the season, we'd do it. That'd be great. But it just doesn't look like with Pac-12 that they'd be able to do that. You addressed it earlier, but how big of an obstacle is that Pac-12 Big Big Ten thing as far as them being able to fit you in? I really don't know about the Pac-12 and the Big uh, Ten and, and what their agreement is. I th it sounds like an interesting proposal to have teams from both conferences play in football, basketball, and all the Olympic sports. But the details of that, you'll have to ask Chris about yeah. that. You mentioned the Big 12 negotiations. I mean, for the people out there, for television purposes, can you address what the current state is of that? Because everyone's curious. I, I really wouldn't say that we have negotiations. I think that uh, there's always open lines of communication between ADs. We're peers, we're friends, we go to the same conferences. They want to know what's going on with us. We want to know what's going on around the country. You have the BCS change in their uh, contract in two years. So there, there's a lot of issues in the next couple of years that people have to keep an eye on. And we're one that really, we have to keep an eye on what's going on. And you mentioned you think things are slowing down now across the country? Well, it, it appears, <laughs> yeah. if you can see things on the surface, it appears that some things have slowed down. It looks like the, the BCS conferences have kind of slowed for a little bit. But you never know when something might uh, step up again. And it could be, have to do with the BCS um, contract that will come do in 2014. And how challenging is it for you? And this, I asked you the long-term question, but that made me think there really is no long-term anymore with the way things are. Things are changing constantly. How do you deal with that when you have to make long-term plans when it comes to scheduling and other things? Um, it's just something that you get used to and you, this is a transition, so we're all kind of on the run. We're learning the ropes on the run. And it, I think it's all relative. Everybody has to plan in their daily activities. Yeah. And uh, ours is just a little bit more public and, and with some things that are new and exciting. And so that, that's a challenge. Are you looking at independence as a year-to-year -year type thing? We are independent right now, and that's uh, the, the cause that we've chosen. And we like where we're at. We're building a strong football team, and I like that. Now where this football team can go, what's going to be best for the football team. That will be determined in the future. But for right now, we got to keep our focus and attention on doing the very best we can. And that's winning games, and building and strengthening our student athletes so they can win championships. And, and uh, in football, you don't have a championship, but we still can strengthen our program to be the best we can, finish high in the rankings, and play great games and great bowls. How concerned are you about getting into, um, you mentioned it's kind of all up in the air, bowl games. You have this year, next year set, but is it going to become more difficult, or is it so uncertain now you can't even think about it? Uh, the key thing is we have this year set, <laughs> and that's good. But uh, into the future, it's somewhat of a crystal ball. There's tentative plans. We have ideas, and we can talk roughly with bowl teams out there, but there, the bowl games potentially could change, even outside the BCS, predicated on what the BCS does. As an independent and as a school that could get a potential limitation to a conference, what kind of gauge do you get on BYU's popularity as, as far as people you know, wanting to play in the sandbox with BYU? Well, based on the number of games that we've been able to schedule over the last uh, two years and into the future, 
I think that we're a good uh, scheduling partner. Uh, we, we've gone home and home or two for ones, or sometimes we've gone out and played a neutral game. And uh, it's easy to get the discussion, but it's not so much how popular we are as are we a good fit for them. Everybody kind of looks at it from our perspective as are you a good fit for us? But it has to be a two-way street whenever you do a contract. And it's about finding those schools and teams that can fit us into their schedule based on who they already have scheduled and what their conference schedule is and what their uh, team is and the strength of their team. And those are, people are scheduled a little tighter now. That is one of the beautiful things about independence is, is the ability to schedule anyone. And I won't say what the context was, but a couple of names that were thrown out there were SC, Florida, Oklahoma today. Oh, no. any, any, any? That was definitely out of context. Yeah. We, uh, we will look to play you know, the very best teams we can in the country, but sometimes we'll make a call and they're not interested because we don't fit their schedule. I'm sure you've heard fan feedback about the November schedule, but you seem very confident that's going to improve pretty quickly. Well, and based on the games that we have scheduled in the future, it's better. It's getting better and better. And, and I think 13 uh, is a, the first year where I said we had two years to schedule. In, in our 2011 and 12 seasons, we contracted those two years ago. And so we had to in order to go independent. But I think we have more flexibility and a little bit more time to be able to find teams that can come and play later in the schedule. Now, they're in the middle of their conference schedule or at the end, and it's, it's not always um, palatable for a team that's making a conference championship run to pause and go play a non-conference game. Some people like to do that, and others don't want to do that. Your big announcement today about the upgrades to the Marriott Center. Um, you know, more comfortable seats. The general public may be happy about it. Um, maybe the concern is moving the students from this, from center court to, to the baseline. Um, do you think it's going to affect the atmosphere in there? Well, I think it'll change the atmosphere. Uh, I think that the atmosphere has to do with our team. If we have a good team and we're running up and down the court, scoring and playing great defense and diving for balls, and uh, the color and pageantry of the Marriott Center will be there, our students are the best in the business. And I think that being on the baseline, they'll be on TV more. <laughs> they'll have opportunities to distract the free throw shooters. Uh, they'll come right down to the court. Obviously, uh, there's pros and cons about the students moving. But I think that our students are the best fans in the world. And they'll make the most out of a situation. That's a change for them. Okay. Okay. See how much easier it is.